are these people? Our our first coverage of Palestine was one of your articles. I think that's a pretty good start, if I had to say so myself. <laughs> but uh, we where you talked about your part on the cast light bread operation, which no one knows about, um, other than a few people. But uh, it's where Israelis were forced to admit that they contaminated the Palestinian water supply with typhoid. Blatant war crime. Can you elaborate on this briefly and other atrocities that have gone underreported prior to October 7th? <clears throat> well, I mean, there were multiple. I mean, people describe um, Yitzhak Karabin as the uh, peacemaker. <laughs> um, but he's the guy who, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he's the guy who brought in uh, the breaking their bones policy, um, where the IOF literally um, used to. I mean, I mean, there are videos circulating of it, and it's absolutely horrific. Um, where they would literally just break the bones of kids and and civilians that they picked up for throwing stones or whatever, or that, you know, it, they didn't need a pretext to do so. Um, and, and Israel has committed endless crimes. I mean, that's why we all say, you know, it didn't begin on October the 7th. It, it actually began way before even 1917. 1917 was the, was the watershed, the, the Balfour um, Treaty. And Balfour, by the way, was a was a die in the world um, Zionist himself, Christian yes. Zionist. <laughs> um, as was Churchill, actually, Winston Churchill. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and and so, but, but you know, even if you fast forward to today, you see the same things. I mean, you're hearing now about a polio outbreak. Well, if you actually read someone like William Engdahl, who had polio. Um, when he was five years old and was paralyzed as a result. He's done a huge amount of research into it. And his claim is basically that it's not a virus. Polio comes from the introduction of a toxin into the body, into the brain. And at that time, of course, when he contracted polio was when the use of DDT um, was sanctioned and it was basically being sprayed everywhere. Um, and there is, according to him, a correlation between um, the then pro prohibition of DDT and the drop in polio cases. And so now what we're suddenly seeing in Gaza, which immediately set off my alarm, beds, alarm bells, quite rightly after what you said, the poisoning of the water with typhoid previously, and, and, and that's, I'm, I'm quite sure it's been done multiple times, particularly in Gaza, because Gaza is a 40 kilometer by 12 kilometer extermination camp and Israel totally controls all the water, for example, and all the food that comes into that camp. So how easy is it to introduce um, disease into that camp if, if you want to, for want of a better word, cull the population, right? I mean, there's, you know, there are diseases in Gaza that um, considering the relatively healthy lifestyle they have when they're not being bombed by Israel um, is unusual and there's been a huge spike as far as I know in cancer cases and so on and so forth. Um, but suddenly there's an outbreak of polio <laughs> and actually I was talking to, to William about this, William Engdahl on um, <clears throat> Saturday and what he said to me, well, you know, the polio could have been introduced, but it could also be present in the conditions that are there anyway, because, yeah. you know, there's raw sewage in the streets and in, in right. the makeshift camps. Um, all the water supply has been destroyed, the water tanks. There was a video only a few days ago with the Zionists blowing up, um, you know, the big water siphons, you know, what you call them, the, the huge um, bulk water carrier things and blowing them up. Um, so it could be that whatever is causing the polio has been introduced by the appalling sanitation conditions anyway. It could be that it has been introduced as a toxin. But then, of course, what's going to happen next? The rollout of the vaccine. And what, who, what faction of society does polio affect? Children under the age of five. 
Right. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't take a huge amount to figure out what's happening here. And then you have, I mean, again, very recently, uh, the protests at the prison that was carrying out um, rectal rape against uh, Palestinian prisoners, but not protests against the rape, protests against the possible prosecution of the soldiers that committed the rape. Which is exactly how they yeah, did human yeah. shields not that long ago. They had a whole, yeah. like, no, we got to keep doing these despicable things. How dare you take that privilege away from us? Like, it's. Yeah, violent. but you know who started the whole human shield thing? With the British. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the British back in the, um, the, the Arab uprisings against the Zionist uh, occupation, which was beginning post 1917. Um, and the British decided that the only way they could push back against the, the, the Arab Palestinian uprising was to take human shields. Right. And that was the only way they could drive safely into the resistance areas in Palestine. So it Hilarious. was the British that started the whole, um, you know, human shield. Good to know. And, and so... then, and then of course, it's all blamed on, on Hamas. Right, <clears throat> but it's the Israelis. There's no evidence of Hamas taking human shields, and yeah. and it's laughable when they actually say that Hamas. I mean, again, I've been in Gaza in 2012, 2013. Eva Bartlett, you know, a dear friend and a, another fantastic journalist, um, yeah. has been in Palestine extensively from 2007 onwards, but in Gaza at the same time as me, and then prior to that in 2008 and 9 as well. Um, <clears throat> but when you talk about human shields, as I said, Gaza is 40 kilometers by 12 kilometers. It's tiny. So of course, it's an incredibly built up area with 1.2, 1.4 million um, civilians living there. But let's have a look at Tel Aviv or occupied Yaffa, right? Yeah. The, um, what's it called? The Hag Kiria military base is in the center of Tel Aviv, right in the middle of residential areas and schools and hospitals and so on. Yeah. You know, so what's the difference? The only difference is it's not being targeted because the resistance effectively is generally not targeting civilians, it's targeting military installations. What right. is Israel doing? Almost exclusively targeting civilians. Oh, 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 oh,